Hey everybody, welcome to today's Kubernetes Masterclass. Really happy to have you all join us. Uh, as usual, we have uh, just a huge number of people uh, joining the line and we have a lot to go over, so I wanna dive right in. Before I start, I wanna let you all know that this session is being recorded, uh, so if you do need to leave early, it's okay. You will receive a recording uh, and the slides following the class. Uh, and today we are going over deploying your applications in a re repeatable way on Kubernetes. And as a way of introduction, um, my name is Matthew Shear. I'm kind of a, commu a community advocate and marketing manager uh, with Rancher. I host the online intro trainings on Thursday, which many of you have probably seen. And our presenter on the line is Chris Kim. Uh, super happy to have you today, Chris. Thanks so much for doing the work to, to uh, put this presentation together. Are you on? Yeah, I am. Thanks, oh. thanks everyone for uh, right. coming to, to watch. All right. Um, so a couple of housekeeping items before we really dive in. So we hope to keep the presentation about 40, 45 minutes. We do have extra time scheduled for questions and questions are always welcome. This is meant to be responsive and interactive to what you need to learn. We also have a ton of other resources on Helm, on Kubernetes, um, deploying applications and, and workloads on Kubernetes, so I might refer you to some other resources as well. And the uh, way to ask a question is using the questions tab in GoToWebinar. If you go to your control pane, you'll be able to ask a question there. You can make it a public, or if you want it to be private just for us, just list it as such. And we do our best to answer every single question that is asked. So if you have one, go ahead and put it in the chat now. Uh, Chris will you know, take moments, um, designated moments during his presentation, uh, and we can, we can ask some aloud that is really relevant to everybody. This session, as I mentioned, is being recorded. A lot of our other training are online uh, on YouTube. Uh, if you go to youtube.com slash c slash rancher, you'll be able to see all of our playlists. You know, we host uh, monthly online meetups, uh, different product features and you know, how-tos. We also post these training sessions uh, as well as others. So there's a lot of rich uh, video resources there that you can find. It's all free and easily accessible. Other resources, many of you probably already are part of uh, the Slack channel, so slack.rancher.io totally free, thousands of members, hundreds of people posting every day. There's also a channel just for these sessions, so the Pound Masterclass, totally free to join, uh, and announcements uh, there as well. And we have a lot of upcoming classes. We pretty much do these once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Um, we've done quite a few already. They just started them this year, and so if you go to rancher.com slash Kubernetes Masterclass, you will be able to find all of the recordings kind of further down the page and then the upcoming classes. So uh, next, uh, not next week, but in two weeks, you know, Sebastian is doing troubleshooting Kubernetes. We just have a ton of stuff. So go there uh, and, and sign up. They're all free uh, and you can uh, learn as you need. So with all of that out of the way, I'm gonna pass the presentation over to Chris so we can dive into the meat of the material. So I'm making you a presenter, Chris. Cool, I can see your, your opening slide. All right, awesome. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for coming out. Uh, so today we'll be talking about sort of deploying your applications in a repeatable way on Kubernetes. Um, so uh, this is actually pretty much going over the concept of um, using Helm. So it's basically an introduction to Helm. Um, we'll talk about Helm versus the Rancher 2 catalog. So one of the features that Rancher has is actually sort of a graphical user interface around Helm. So, uh, and we provide this to uh, essentially allow you to sort of help manage the lifecycle of your application a little bit easier than having to do, you know, manual Helm install or Helm, Helm you know, upgrade, et cetera, commands. And of course, you know, there are, you know, the Helm, uh, like provide, there's the Helm provider for things like Terraform or you could sort of script it out yourself, but, you know, Rancher as sort of a tool is, is there to sort of help you out uh, using Helm. So we'll also be kind of going over uh, creating your own Helm and catalog repository. So you actually deploying Chart Museum for this. Uh, I'll actually give you a, a small demo of that. 
um, as well as actually creating a questions.yaml, which is one of those additional metadata files that you would add for a custom catalog app. Um, and that's actually to give you that sort of question and answer interface inside of Rancher. Um, and finally, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about managing the lifecycle of your applications um, using sort of Helm. So uh, yeah, so an introduction to Helm, right? So Helm is just a package manager for Kubernetes. And, and all it's gonna do is, is essentially allow you to package um, your applications using what's called a Helm chart. And um, using a Helm chart is quite, it's quite helpful. It, it essentially just allows you to templatize the deployment of things like, uh, sorry, it, it allows you to uh, sort of deploy things like uh, your, your Kubernetes manifests in such a way that they're repeatable. Um, your it's, it's a templating engine, right? So that it, it's quite useful for that. Um, they allow, uh, and this is kind of what what that says. Um, <clears throat> but the important thing to note here is it doesn't eliminate your CI CD pipeline, right? So Helm is just a tool for deployment. It's not going to help you with things like building, you know, your images, pushing those images or anything like that. It's just one piece of the puzzle. Um, and more information about this can be found at helm.sh um, slash docs. So, so that's going to be the Helm docs uh, where you'll be able to get a little bit more information about how to build a Helm chart. I mean, there's a million ways to build a Helm chart. Um, and there's not really one right way. Uh, there, you know, people have their own styles. It's like, you know, programming, it's you have your own style. Um, so yeah, kind of going into what Helm versus Rancher 2's catalog are. So Rancher 2 catalogs provide a user interface to interact with Helm charts. And then I'll actually be demoing this in a little bit here when I deploy WordPress. But um, all it is is going to be building a graphical user interface and sort of a Rancher managed lifecycle around your Helm charts in such a way that it makes it easier. You can do things like point and click um, deploys. So Rancher actually provides a curated catalog library. And these are going to be essentially Helm charts we've taken from Helm Stable. Um, and added the, the bits of metadata, so that questions.yaml, as well as the app readme to give you that Rancher 2 catalog app interface. Um, and you also actually have uh, custom repositories, right? So that's obviously, you know, there's no point in using something like a catalog or a Helm chart if you can't have your own repository. So custom repositories can be added. Um, they can actually be Git or Helm based for Rancher. Um, this is a little bit different than Helm itself, where it's a little bit more difficult to use a Git repository with Helm. Uh, but, you know, if you do want to run your own chart museum or, you know, you can even just use S3, for example, and generate your own index.yaml, et cetera, um, you can do that. Uh, but chart museum is nice and convenient because it allow, it, it'll automatically generate that YAML based on what you push into it. So um, kind of a small screenshot of what, you know, the catalog app browser interface looks like. And then I'll actually be demoing this in a little bit. Um, essentially, what it'll allow you to do is go through uh, the list of Helm charts that we've actually uh, curated here. So these are going to be things like Artifactory, uh, things like Cert Manager, Chart Museum, which is what we're also going to be deploying. Um, and yeah, so with a little bit of metadata, you can actually make your charts interactive. And this is uh, actually adding a question and answer interface. Um, so by allowing for point and click deployments of Helm charts, it actually makes it a little bit easier to sort of piece your puzzle together uh, when you're doing things like development, but also actually when you're looking towards more sort of production or dev test style deployments uh, or, or sort of pr or promoted deployments, it makes it a little bit easier because now you actually have interactivity. You know what your variables are um, inside of there. So an example of this is going to be the EFK catalog app. Um, so basically you can see here that you know, Rancher is giving you the small interface into EFK. Um, well, we actually have these questions and answer or these questions that you'll fill out. So whether you want to use the default image, whether you want to use the Elasticsearch JVM or uh, sorry, set the Elasticsearch JVM heap size, et cetera. We have all these sorts of things inside of here. Um, so now actually what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shift gears a little bit and actually demo uh, deploying WordPress using the catalog app interface instead of Rancher. So I'll go ahead and drop, drop out of here. Um, over here, we actually have uh, a cluster that's going to be my Helm demo cluster. This is going to be provisioned by Rancher 2.2, um, you know, running v uh, 1.13.5 of Kubernetes. And if I actually go into my default project here, uh, that's wrong cluster. But um, if I go into the default project here for that uh, cluster, I'm actually able to go up here to the apps tab. And we can go ahead and click launch and see that, I, that we have that same interface that I kind of showed you earlier. If I scroll down here, we can actually choose WordPress um, and deploy WordPress in an easy for, easy for uh, easy way. So as I'm scrolling down here, um, we can see that, you know, I do get a few questions here. So the WordPress username, the WordPress password, you know, admin email, persistent volume enabled. I don't have persistent storage on this cluster, so I'll just leave that at false. Um, I'll also have it install MariaDB. 
Um, if any of you guys have actually watched my Submariner demo um, or, or some of the Submariner stuff that I've done, I sort of deployed WordPress in a uh, you know cross cluster fashion as well. So so you know using the same Helm charts uh, to do this. And I will go ahead and actually have it generate a zip.io hostname for me. So when I click launch here, we'll actually see that Rancher will uh, sp spin up an instance of Tiller and actually create the necessary resources to make this work. And we can see things like what the answers were that we passed in, et cetera. Um, and we can see that it'll take a little bit because the images will have to get pulled down. But essentially, Rancher's gone through, uh, spun up Tiller, and then actually instantiated this Helm chart for me. Um, and we can see a couple of the services, the ingress, um, and the workloads. And we can go back over here and see that um, as MariaDB comes up, we'll be hey, able Chris. to. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chris. Hey, just going to interrupt you because you lost audio for the last like 15 seconds. Could you just oh, repeat okay. what you were just saying? Oh, I, I wasn't saying anything at that time. So. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind then. Sorry to interrupt. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so we're just waiting for sort of MariaDB to go ahead and initialize our database here. Um, once it does this, then we'll, see, we'll be able to see WordPress actually um, install itself. And we'll have a functional WordPress that we can actually click and interact with. While we're waiting, I'm just going to uh, read one of the questions that's relevant to what's happening right now. And um, Quan asks, how can we see or query the tiller that Rancher stood up for the deployment? So um, you can, you don't have direct access to that tiller. Uh, the important thing to note here is that Rancher is spinning up this tiller on a in an on demand like on an on demand basis. The reason for this is because tiller by default is sort of like running like a like a back door on your cluster because if it, unless you set the R back up properly and even if you do set the R back up properly. Um, it can actually do like it can deploy into pretty much any namespace, generally speaking, with the default sort of just make it cluster admin. So Rancher is actually spinning up Tiller and enforcing RBAC in such a way that it, that you can't try to deploy a Helm chart that's going to create things in a namespace you're not supposed to have access to. Um, and this actually makes your, your clusters a little bit more secure when it comes down to deploying things using Helm. So you cannot. Yes. Yeah, so, so kind of to answer that original question, you can't access the, uh, the Tiller that Rancher spins up. But at the same time, you you um you know you actually have if you want to interact with with I, I guess sort of the, the Helm interface you can't so so you can't do like something like a Helm install. But what you can do is download the Rancher CLI and then do a Hel uh, a Rancher uh, like it's a catalog app install and upgrade etc. And, and it's the same interface that you get with Helm just um through the Rancher CLI. Um, we can actually see that if I click that uh, this AD right here, which is my ingress rule, we actually have this functional WordPress blog. Um, and that's, you know, just very, very basic demo of using these catalog apps uh, with Rancher. So kind of going back um, to my presentation, you know, so you can create your own Helm and catalog repositories. And I actually mentioned this earlier. Um, Rancher does allow you to add your own custom catalog repository. Um, and conveniently, so Rancher is actually providing a chart museum chart from within that library. Um, it's, but something important to note is if you're trying to use this with Rancher and if, if you tried to do the, uh, do this before, you may have found that you get like a spinning version wheel because um, it never loads the versions because it's really not able to load the, the targzs. Um, so it's actually really important for you to set the absolute URL for targzs and the index.yaml. I mean, if you don't set that, then you'll run into a few problems with Rancher. And I'll actually illustrate, well, I won't il illustrate it, but I'll show you what setting that absolute URL does. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and demo this uh, deploying a catalog repository inside of that that uh, Helm uh, demo cluster, which is going to be creating a chart museum deployment, adding a chart to that chart museum, and then adding that custom repository to Rancher so that we can actually access it. So if we go back here um, and go into our apps tab again, I'll go to up here and click launch. Uh, we'll scroll and see that we have chart museum. As I scroll down here, um, I'll actually just go ahead and use the local storage backend and I'll disable persistent storage in this case. You know, don't do this. This is not something you can do for production because you obviously want to have persistent storage. Uh, but for demo purposes, this is okay. I'll go ahead and specify a host name and I've actually already pre-set up a DNS record to um, a load balancer sitting in front of these, no uh, in, in front of my worker nodes that has the Nginx ingress controller. 
Um, and it's actually going to be helmed at Fremont at rancherlabs.com. Um, and then our absolute URL here is going to be http colon slash slash helm dot And like I said, it's very important for you to set this absolute URL. Um, if I go ahead and click launch here, we'll see that this chart museum does get um, installed and uh, it'll take a little bit. You know, obviously Rancher's got to spin up that tiller um, and it'll go through here. So we can see that chart museum itself is up. The ingress rule, um, that's here. It will be set up as well so that we can actually click here and see that we actually have access to chart museum. Um, something important to note here is that the kind of way the chart, uh, the Helm sort of figures everything out is by using an index.yaml. So if we actually go and curl against helm.fremont.rancherlabs.com at index.yaml, um, we'll see that we actually don't have anything in here yet, but this was generated, you know, for example, now, um, but, you know, obviously this is only as like useful as actually, uh, this is not very useful if you don't actually have any charts inside of it. So um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and clone uh, the Git repository for the Submariner charts. And we'll actually go ahead and push that into my um, chart museum. So we actually have two charts here. So one of them is Submariner and the other one's Submariner Kids Broker. So if I go into Submariner, we can see that this is my conventional Helm chart. So we have the chart.yaml, um, the templates, and then uh, values.yaml. But you know, like I mentioned earlier, to make this compatible with Rancher, I have an app readme as well as the questions.yaml. The questions.yaml is really where most of that magic happens. Now, I go ahead and use Helm package to go ahead and create um, this chart, and it'll actually save it as this .tgz file. Um, and then finally, the last step of this is actually going to be to go ahead and uh, push this submariner i guess 001.tgz up to my um chart repository or chart museum so if i do that we'll see that um we'll get this saved true um and then actually if we curl against uh if we curl against the index.yaml we'll see that we actually now have an entry where it's going to be submariner um the source is going to be obviously the github this is just populating this from chart.yaml um but also the important thing to note here is that our URL has this absolute path to where it actually is gonna reside on this, um, this I guess, uh, chart museum. And now if I actually go into Rancher, uh, we can add that chart, that chart repository. Uh, so I'll go ahead and add it at Global Scope. Um, we can add it here. So we'll just call, go ahead and call, just call it like, you know, chart museum. Um, and we'll set this to, or actually, yeah. We'll set this to helm.fremont.rancherlabs.com. Um, and when I go ahead and just create that, it'll go through and actually uh, pull those charts down. And then we should be able to go into our default project and see when we go to the apps tab and try to deploy again, that we actually have Chart Museum showing up. And now my submariner chart is here. So if I click view details, we can see that I do have my full on like rancher sort of uh, catalog app interface, but I only actually have one version. Um, so something you can do, uh, and this is obviously, you know, I'm not actually making any changes to this chart, but um, you can actually do a Helm package and specify the version to be like the zero, uh, zero, zero 002. Um, and you can take that binary and actually upload it to uh, your Helm, I guess your chart museum. And when you do this, uh, you can go back into the catalogs interface in 2.2. This is an, it's kind of a new feature actually for 2.2. You used to have to sort of jump through hoops to do this, but now you can actually uh, force a refresh of this, this catalog. Um, and when we go back here to the MC Helm demo, uh, we'll be able to see that we have two versions available when we actually deploy. So if I go here and click launch, we'll see that um, in the chart museum, we actually have uh, two template versions. And the, you know this is basically, you could build this into your CI CD pipeline where you actually would build a Helm chart per release of your application. Um, maybe if your application is a little bit less dependent on the deployment resources, i.e. it's just your image that's going to change, then you don't necessarily need to do something as crazy as this. But regardless, it does make it a little bit easier to actually deploy your application. Um, so one, uh, so kind of moving really quickly back to my presentation. Um, so Rancher catalogs, like I said, are powered by two additional metadata files, right? So we already, I already kind of showed you this. Uh, it's the questions.yaml as well as the app-readme.md. 
Um, and detailed documentation on these can actually be found here. I know that's a really long URL. Uh, we'll be able to send that out, but it's on the range of documentation if you go under sort of catalog and, or custom, um, and then there's gonna be a link for creating. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and inspect the submarinerquestions.yaml. Um, and this is just so that we can sort of figure out what's going on, right? So if I go to Rancher Submariner Charts, um, we can actually go inside of this Submariner and actually look at the questions.yaml. Um, and we can see that all it is is just YAML that, and we've basically defined what we're trying to do, right? So we have questions here as our sort of top level um, variable, but we also have, uh, you know, in our list, we, we say what the Helm variable is. We can say, uh, you know, what the default is in this case this is a uh, this is a boolean that's going to be true um we we can specify our type we set our description our label the group so that it makes it a little bit easier to organize these um and one of the actual one of the actual powerful things we have inside of rancher is the sub question concept so based on what the value is of your variable you can actually set a sub question um so this for example says if the default engine image is actually set to true or, uh, or, or sorry, set to false, then we wanna show our sub questions, which are actually gonna be specifying our container image. And this is actually uh, demonstrable. So if we go back here, right, we can see that it says use our default submarine or engine image. If I go in and click false, we'll actually see that we had these two fields populate and the same thing will happen over here as well. So this is sort of the, uh, this is sort of how Rancher's catalog app interface works. Um, and like I said, we do have documentation here. So if we go into the Rancher 2 docs and we click read the docs, and then we drop into uh, sort of catalogs and apps, and then custom catalogs, and then creating your custom catalog. Hey, <clears throat> hey, Chris, I think we just lost your audio if you are talking right now. We can't hear you. Together to do some prototyping, but the reality is if you wanna use the Rancher Catalog Apps interface to deploy your own applications, you will have to build your own uh, catalog app. So uh, hey, hey, this Chris, is- mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Um, yes. you, you lost ad, uh, audio as soon as you got to this creating page. Okay. So we have, yeah, if you could just just uh, reiterate what you said. And a couple of people, uh, quite, everybody said they lost audio and um, a couple of people have asked if you could slow down a little bit too. Okay. To do that. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so I guess to go off with, um, this is just the documentation for uh, creating your own custom catalog apps. Um, and I was just kind of going down. So we do have the sort of chart directory structure where you can actually uh, look at the various, uh, or, or this is essentially what Rancher is expecting you to have for your chart directory structure. Um, we've already kind of talked about our additional file, so app readme as well as questions.yaml. Um, and then finally, if you go down here, we can actually see, you know, the, the, we actually have the reference as to what, you know, how, what these sort of entries will be. For example, the type being, you know, defaulting to string, but we also have string, boolean, int, um, enum, which is going to be like a selector, uh, password, storage class, and host name. Um, so the important ones, or the, the kind of neat ones here are going to be host name and storage class, because if you have that zip.io set up so that you can do wildcarding, um, when you set that, the host name will provide the interface to allow a user to set that. Uh, and then, you know, storage class and then enum. If you don't want that zip.io thing to show up, then you just set that type to string. And then kind of like, a, you know, just going back here, it, it sort of lines up, right? So our, our submariner.cluster ID variables actually um, doesn't have a default. Its description is this, its type is a string, um, the label is cluster ID, uh, it's marked as required, and, and the group is actually configuration. So so you actually have a lot of flexibility by going through the Rancher catalog interface, um, trying to create your questions.yaml. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be our sort of questions.yaml. Um, it's quite, you know, if you if we actually dig into what's going on inside of our chart. So so obviously we have our chart.yaml, um, which is gonna be where we specify some of that Helm metadata. Uh, so obviously where this chart's coming from, sort of the maintainers of this chart, um, the version and app version. So, so one of the important things to note here um, is that the version is quite, Particular, so you so it's it's Sember, so you're going to want to set that to something like you know 0.0.1. .0 .0 the app version's a little bit less um, 
the Alvers is a little bit less, uh, I guess, an, uh, annoying. Uh, where you can set that to pretty much any sort of version, you can you can set that to things like v0.0.1 dash dev. Um, you can't set this to things like just dev. Rancher will get a little upset at you for doing that um, because it's expecting to be able to parse that. Uh, and and just kind of an example for this would be um, if we do a, I believe it's a Helm search in the Rancher latest, and we actually list them all. We can see that what we've done is we actually have Rancher latest for 221. Um, we have the app version being v221, and then obviously we do the same sort of things with our RCs as we've been releasing those. Um, and obviously, you know, RCs are a little bit are, are internal only, or we're generally for internal consumption. You can use RCs, but you know, we don't really support upgrading to or from them. Um, we can actually see that you know we 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 have this full sort of uh, chart version set up here, and and this is obviously just a Helm chart repository. This is you know Rancher latest. Um, so yeah. Um, Matthew, if we have any questions that we want to try to hit now, um, now might, might be the time to do this, uh, yeah, before we yeah. move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, terrific. There's, there's a lot of questions. Um, so let's see, uh, I'll start just at the end. Marcy asks, does the chart museum need to be public and unauthenticated or can we make it private in the cluster, in cluster? So, um, it doesn't need to be public and unauthenticated it can be it can be private and and authenticated um you know both of the like like as long as rancher can access your helm ch your chart museum that's okay um one of the things we've added into two um is the ability so if you go over here to the catalogs um as you're adding the catalog you can actually specify that you're using a private catalog and provide your own credentials uh to get into it and that actually makes it a little bit easier than having to figure out a janky way to get this to sort of allow you to authenticate i hope that answers your question cool thanks okay the next one is from herman who asks is it possible to publish charts from gitlab to chart museum i'm thinking about a gitlab job which automatically publishes charts from a repo. Yeah, so um, you can come up with your own way. I've never done that with GitLab myself, but you can actually, if you, you can build in your pipeline. I mean, because if, as you saw, all I did was just sort of curl that, that uh, data binary up into the chart museum. Obviously, if you enabled something like basic auth, then you'd have to provide your credentials um, as you do that. But yeah, you can definitely do this as part of your pipeline and you can even actually interact with the Rancher API to force that refresh before you go and try to deploy that latest um, version of your Helm chart or, or, uh, so that you actually pull your changes or whatever you need to do. Cool, okay, awesome, thanks. All right, the next one is from Jan who says, what's the difference between Chart Museum and my Rancher catalog in GitHub? Um, so your rancher catalog from GitHub is an easy way. So, so basically we've added the ability to pull from Git to help with both development as well as some organizations don't want to have to manage something like a chart museum. Uh, the important thing to note here is that chart museum, while it does work with rancher and you can use it with rancher, um, it's really designed more to be be an actual Helm chart repository. So you can do something like a Helm repo add um, and specify the URL to your chart museum. Um, and, and that's actually because this is sort of more of a limitation with Helm. If you've ever tried getting Helm to work straight out of the box with a Git repo, it's really not easy. So, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, and that's sort of, you know, so, so Rancher gives you the ability to use, you know, a GitHub uh, catalog sort of repository if you want to provide that. But, you know, also it's nice to be able to do uh, to run your own chart museum if you're if you anticipate ever do, having to do you know just raw helm installs or helm upgrades awesome okay cool thank you all right next one is from Quan who says i've used rancher catalogs for a while and it works for the most part but when i run into issues how do i troubleshoot a deployment launch via the catalog so um you've got a couple of different so i, I don't have a broken helm chart to show but uh so there's two steps or two areas from the manifest area that can be broken. So either when you do your like sort of Helm install or have Rancher do the, you know, install, um, it, if it has errors trying to render your Helm chart, it'll spit those out in a very loud way um, on the Helm chart info, info page. If you're having issues with your deployment not working, you can actually Act, you can actually edit your deployment sort of on the fly and try to tweak it to work and then reflect those changes back into your Helm chart yourself. 
But the reality is that it's a little bit more difficult. You know, if you're using Helm to deploy and you you don't already have this sort of sandbox environment where you've developed that original YAML, then it can be a little bit more difficult. Um, but Rancher does give you sort of the interface to be able to click through. Like for example, you know, we we got, went ahead and deployed a few things into our default project. Um, I can use the Rancher interface to actually, for example, look at the deployment here and view and edit the YAML and see what actually got spat out. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, several more questions here. Here's the next one. I'm using GitLab with Kubernetes integration, which also installs Tiller. Do they play well together? So, no. Um, so I guess the short answer would be no. Uh, the reality is that if you're gonna be using Rancher to perform the installation or using the catalog app interface, you're gonna have to like, you're gonna to have to go with a rancher mentality of how to do things. Um, and, and this goes back to what, you know, Tiller is essentially run inside of rancher um, on a per app basis to enforce RBAC and to make things a little bit more, I guess, elegant. Um, but the problem with that is you don't have an exposed Tiller that you can use to try and kick off your own deployments. Um, so it makes it a little bit more difficult, but at the same time, it's a little safer. Um, if you want to buy it, like do the whole GitLab method of, you know, spinning up Tiller, uh, you can do that. Um, in fact, actually, if you look at the documentation for installing Rancher from uh, in a high availability installation, um, you actually have the ability to, to, to uh, or you, we actually require you to install uh, Tiller uh, or actually in it, in it Tiller into your cluster so that it can install things. And that's actually not managed by Rancher. Um, so Technically, they can co-locate with each other, so you can actually have a tiller running inside of your work workload cluster and still use the Rancher catalog app interface, but they will not they will not be able to see each other. Okay, awesome, thank you. Uh, lots more questions here, Chris. Um, here's from Marcy. Can Rancher catalogs use the tillerless method Helm template instead of relying on tiller? So Rancher catalogs used used to internally inside of Rancher use the Helm template method. The problem with this is that um, you miss out on things like pre and post installation hooks or just hooks in general. Uh, so we actually moved to spinning up a per instance tiller. I'd be interested to hear your use case um, actually for why you would wanna do a Helm template instead of just running a tiller. Um, so maybe if you wanna ping me on Slack about that, I'd be curious to see to hear a little bit more about that. Cool, okay, awesome, here's the next one. It's from Marcus. Are you going to include operator from CoreOS to make handling stateful apps easier? So the operator framework um, is kind of, it doesn't really like intersect here. Um, like if you wanna build your own operator and deploy that using a Helm chart, you can. Um, and actually, if we go into our apps, we actually have the etcd operator that we have available here. So, you know, you can deploy things like operators inside, but we're not gonna, we're not doing anything specifically to help you build operators, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Um, here's the next one from Jesse. Does Helm package command and chart museum work when using Rancher's recommended chart hierarchy? Helm doesn't seem to like the extra app version in the directory path. Yeah, so it doesn't. Um, so, so this chart hierarchy that we document is actually geared more towards Git. Um, and the reason for this is because Git is, is a little bit easier to do development with because you don't you just push and then you just refresh. Um, if you if you want, want to do the Helm package like what I did, uh, it's better off that you actually um, follow the more Helm native way of doing it, so that you actually can do a Helm package um, in the directory, and it's not going to complain about having um, that app version. Because it's because it, what what it'll likely complain about is, um, if I recall off the top of my head, it's uh, the it's because it, this the chart I guess name needs to be the same as the actual folder it's in versus with the Rancher. Uh, way of doing it, it's like, it's you're setting your version so it doesn't match, but um, yeah, you, you do sort of need to change that, but it really shouldn't be difficult to change that on the fly if you wanna, if you wanna come up with a pipeline to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, sweet. Um, okay, here's the next one from David. Which deployment strategy is used when you upgrade a catalog installation? Blue-green, rolling update maybe? 
Um, so that's sort of dependent on the way you built your, uh, like this, that's less of a, like, that's less of a helm thing is much helm just will basically go through and just upgrade your deployment. Um, if your deployment is set up in such a way that you can do like, not really blue green, but like sort of, you know, rolling deployment, then, and that's actually, you're actually relying on the Kubernetes controllers, like the deployment controller to help you with your application rollouts rather than um, sort of using Helm uh, for that. Okay. Okay, sweet. Here's the next one. I think you might have answered this or related topic, but Jamil asked, is it possible to do an automated chart deploy with Rancher Catalog? For example, installing a basic infrastructure like logging, external DNS, et cetera. Yeah, it absolutely is. Um, the, the way I would actually do it is, is um, you can actually automate around the Rancher CLI. Um, I think I mentioned that earlier and actually do something like a Rancher apps install um, for that for whatever you're trying to do inside of your cluster. And that's probably the easiest way to automate. Otherwise, if you want to just use raw tiller inside of your cluster, you can also use like Terraform um, to actually install, um, you know, help charts into your cluster. Okay, sweet. All right, here, this one's from uh, Benir. In the Rancher catalog, can I create multiple already configured images of applications in a single package for implementation and orchestra orchestration of DevOps environments? That's the first question. Uh, there's a second part too, you wanna answer that first? Yeah, so that's a little bit, Okay, so um, if you're looking at basically creating your own chart, like like repository of curated charts on that you can like expose to developers, um, that's more than possible to do. Um, in fact, you can even turn off that library inside of Rancher and actually deploy straight out from your your charts uh, or, or sorry, your, your like your repository, so that you know developers don't have access to things they shouldn't. Um, but it's not going to be like multiple already configured images of applications in a single package for that's that's a little bit complicated in terms of like the wordsmithing i i just i I, th I think i know what you're asking but i could be wrong um the other thing you can do is technically like you could build one helm chart that's just a monolith um the gitlab helm chart's a little bit like that actually it's got a lot of customizability inside of it so you can actually do things like install like you can install the entire stack uh, from within that single Helm chart, um, which is quite impressive, but you can do that if you want, but it gets a little bit, it gets to be a little bit of a, a maintenance headache if you do that. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay, so here's the second part, which I think you might have just addressed, but he says, is there an option to create image catalogs from applications for implementation in multi-cloud Docker environments for preparing scenarios for dev tests? So that's still like, I, I'm, I'm just a little confused on the term image catalog. Um, I'm gonna assume that's like a Helm catalog. So uh, creating Helm catalogs from applications for implementation, that's absolutely possible. Um, although, you know, it really depends on the way you are set up and how you're developing your Helm charts in the first place. But yeah, you could definitely have, you know, your rancher be able to deploy a, your production uh, charts versus, you know, your dev, dev test charts um, all from sort of the same repository if you want to set it up that way, although it may make sense to actually run, you know, a production repository. It really depends on what you're trying to do, um, so. Sweet, okay. Um, here's the next one from Justin. Can you show a multi-chart chart museum hierarchy configura configuration example such as storing two different charts in one chart museum instance? Um, I could actually, so yeah, let me, let me go ahead and actually, um, I, I can try to do that real quick. I'm gonna have to fumble through it a little bit, but um, so we can see that Submariner is here. I'm running, you know, I put that 001 and 002 um, and I do have another chart called the Submariner uh, Kate's Broker. So we can actually go into here and do a Helm, Helm package um, here. And if I curl this data binary for the Submariner um, Kate's Broker, So we can see now that I've pushed that up, um, if I actually curl against the index.yaml, we'll see that we have Submariner Kate's broker listed here with the app version being 001. Um, and then we can see that Submariner is also up here as well. Now, if we go back to Rancher and actually do a, um, a, a refresh of our catalog, then we can actually see that what will happen is we'll have two options when I go in and filter by, um, 
I filter by that uh, catalog repository. So now we have two available. Is that sort of, I, I, I'm hoping that sort of answers your questions uh, or your question. Um, the important thing to note here is just that uh, you want to make sure that your, your chart name is different so that it actually gets classified independently. Um, and you can sort of do that um, inside of here, right? So you just want to make sure that your chart, your name inside of the chart.yaml is correct. OK, cool. Um, OK, here's the next one from Jesse. With the release of Kubernetes 1.14, how long till we can expect production support for Rancher, Helm, and Windows containers? So that's not a question that I can answer for you. Um, that would have, yeah, that's, uh, if, if you're looking for that, I definitely reach out to someone on our sales team so that they can actually work with you um, to try to get the answers that you're looking for. But I, I can't answer that um, officially. Sure, totally understand. OK, here's, here's the next one from Charles. How can I enhance an existing catalog app like Elasticstack to include additional tools like Rally and add some persistent volume mounts to NFS? Is it possible? If so, how? So you can technically do this. Um, we actually store all of these charts inside of a repository um, at rancher slash charts. So if you wanted to take and work work with uh, the, the sort of EFK app that already, or like I guess Elasticsearch, um, you'd actually be able to go into here, fork this and actually add to it. Um, this is one way to do it. Uh, although you could also just build your own um, Helm chart as well. Uh, you could also technically use requirements to try to to try to include um, the other sorts of things for it. But this is sort of it is possible. Just it isn't something that you'd be able to do from like a GUI. You'd have to you definitely have to put a little bit of legwork into it. Right. Okay. Cool. That Chris, that's all the questions that we have in the queue right now. Anything okay. else you want to fill us? Yeah, so there's there's just one last sort of bit on my presentation, which is sort of managing the lifecycle of your application. Um, I think we've actually sort of already uh, hit this, but um, so Helm's actually storing your application configuration as a config map. Um, but actually something that is really nice is that Helm conveniently has this rollback capability. Um, the reality is that Helm's actually sort of abusing config maps that your earlier versions of Helm didn't do any compression. So you would actually store these giant config maps that would be too big for Kubernetes. Um, now it's doing compression, which makes it a little bit, you know, less, uh, lo like a little, like not as annoying to store. Um, and like I said, it does have that rollback capability. So we saw that I can actually push new versions of my Helm chart up. I can actually do a rollback from, you know, that uh, from a uh, later version back to an earlier version, as long as uh, we still have that old config map. Um, so thinking forward, as you release your new versions of your app and have Rancher refresh your catalog, you can actually perform upgrades. Um, and this is actually something, it's a little bit more difficult for me to uh, sort of illustrate this, but uh, you know these are actually gonna be very similar to your, your Helm upgrade. Uh, the important thing being here, that if you do a Helm install or Helm upgrade without, so let's say you do a Helm install and you do a dash dash set um, to try to set all your variables. When you do a Helm upgrade and you try to reuse the existing variables, it can be it doesn't really work that well. Um, to it doesn't really work that well in terms of trying to reuse those variables. So we do recommend you actually dash dash set again, or just come up with a values.yaml so that you actually will um, force those values into place. Uh, so it, you know, Rancher, like I said, does have that ability. So if we actually go into our default project, um, and like for example, here you could see that. Uh, chart Museum, you know, there's an upgrade. Obviously, I don't really have any, a newer version of Helm, Helm uh, Chart Museum to upgrade to. But the thing that I can do with an upgrade, even though I'm not going to change my template version, is actually to change some of the parameters. So if I wanted to actually change this host name or change this, I can actually do that by using an upgrade, even though I'm staying on the same version. Um, and then we also have the rollback. Obviously, I don't have a revision really to roll back to other than just the one here. But as I'm doing upgrades, you can actually roll this version back. The important thing to note here, though, is that if your application is storing data inside of a database and you change your schema um, and you go in and Helm upgrade and you break things and you want to roll back and your application won't be compatible anymore because you've changed your schema in your database, this is like this is not going to solve this problem for you. Um, this is only going to be doing rollbacks for your actual like manifests and things like that, not like your total stack. So do keep that in mind. It's not a it's not a silver bullet. It's not going to help you like 
you know, walk out of a big uh, production change problem, but it is, it is convenient to have, especially for doing things like dev and test, um, as you may, you know, accidentally roll out a bad version of your Helm chart, for example, or you could also maybe Helm upgrade your way out of that as well. Um, so yeah, other than that, um, I don't really have anything else in my current presentation, Matthew. Uh, so I was, you know, I guess can answer a few more questions um, or maybe do a, a few sort of entourage demos, but, um, cool. you know. Awesome, Chris. Yeah, amazing work. Thank you so much. And there are more questions, so let's get to them. And uh, there's just a few. Some, if there is what some other demo that you want to do in the time remaining, we could we could do it. Um, so this one is from David, who asks, "What's the difference between upgrading to a previous version versus rolling back and choosing a revision?" So, um, if you upgrade to a previous version of that chart you're going to end up creating an additional revision. Um, the revisions are a little bit more toward, like, like that's the same as asking, what's the difference between me taking a deployment and updating the deployment to change your version back versus just doing a cube cut or like just to, to, to move to an earlier version of deployment. They're really like, like either works. It, it's just that, you know, ro like, it really depends on what you want to do. I, I wouldn't say that there's one way or the other. I mean, whatever you're comfortable with. Cool. Okay. Um, all right. Here's here's another one from Herman who asks. Um, you might need to read this question if I if I don't get it. But it says, uh, Chris, could you deploy Udo to demo the usage of other charts, Postgres SQL or MySQL? Um, I mean, yeah, I could, but not current. I'm not prepared to do something like that currently. So it's probably better that I don't sit here and fumble my way through doing trying to do something like that. So. I could maybe at a future date or something like that, but not now. Yeah, yeah no problem. Okay, cool. Um, well, that's the only questions that I see in the queue. So if you have, if you do want to demo anything, um, then we can. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really have much to demo. I mean, it's other than uh, we already sort of went through the sort of you know how to use uh, Rancher to deploy things from a catalog. Um, you know, just I don't catalogs are pretty pretty basic. Um, the actual complication comes from going through charts. So I can go over sort of the Helm chart templates, um, a couple of things that we have here, right? So so just kind of to, to look at what we have. So we do have our notes.txt here. I mean, what this actually notes.txt is, is essentially a way that you can templatize some notes after someone does a Helm install so that they can actually get information on maybe how to use the chart, right? So for example, here, um, I'm saying that if the node selector is enabled, the values.engine.node selector enabled, um, I want to go ahead and display the message, you know, if you haven't done so already, please label a node so that you can elect it for running Submariner. Um, and then also there's sort of a little bit more metadata information down here. So so we are doing a lot of work in, in terms of trying to make uh, all of this, uh, or, or, or what we're trying to do work inside of Rancher to expose this information to you as well. So instead of, you know, obviously Helm just spitting that out on the CLI when you do a Helm install, it'll actually show this to you inside of Rancher in a dropdown. Um, the other thing, that's really neat is going to be using something like a helpers.tpl uh, file. So what something like helpers.tpl would do, or just any sort of like template file or, or any sort of helper, um, you can actually define variables based on what you have. So we, we can see here that what we've done is, you know, Kubernetes has the limitation that that resources can't be longer than 63 characters, or certain resources can't be longer than 63 characters, um, and can't like end it with things. So we've essentially been able to take the, the chart name and actually override it with, and truncate the, the length. Um, we're using all these sorts of like, uh, uh, I guess, filters to do this. Um, we're also gonna be able to, you know, like I said, truncate down here, but basically do some sane defaults and, and applying things so that we can actually uh, modify our charts and make it work. Um, one important thing to note here is that uh, when you're using uh, Helm, you know, you the newer versions of Helm actually have uh, hooks for installing CRD. So this is actually an annotation that you can set, which is helm.sh slash hook um, for CRD install. Um, the other important thing as well is that you'll notice that I don't specify. Um, so if we actually go into like engine deploy, for example, um, you'll see under the metadata that I'm, I'm actually not specifying a namespace. Um, this is actually because uh, Helm will automatically sort of patch the release namespace into place for me based on what you pass in with dash dash namespace. So there's no reason to kind of like overwrite this. There are a few cases where you do want to like access the, the namespace. So if we actually go into the RBAC, for example, we can actually go down and see that um, we're doing sort of role-based RBAC with uh, namespace uh, being specific in the namespace. 
Um, so when I create my role binding, I'm actually setting the namespace of the subject to the dot release dot namespace. Um, the other thing, you know, capitals and spelling is very important here. So you don't want to mis misspell these. And you also want to make sure that these are, uh, you know, yeah, capitalized properly. Um, so yeah, Helm charts, uh, you know, they're very, very useful. You have a lot of logic that you can actually implement. So this is actually Go template logic, but um, you know, there are a few other templating engines, if I recall. Um, so, you know, many ways to do the same thing. Um, so just kind of mess around with it. You can actually look at example charts. So for example, um, like, I, like I said already, the rancher slash charts um, is a good place to sort of look at rancher like catalog. So if we go inside of Murray DB, for example, we can actually see that um, we actually have this questions.yaml. This is actually probably, it's a, it's a little um, mundane at times because you're adding a lot of information that you've already sort of defined in your values.yaml. Um, the behavior of Rancher when using your questions.yaml is actually to take the defined variable from inside of your values.yaml. Um, but if you've defined it here, and you have a default set, it will actually override that. So keep that in mind um, as you're sort of developing your home touch. If you see some unexpected sort of behavior, that that can be something that happens. Uh, and yeah, Helm is great. Um, you know, I definitely would recommend using it. I know there's a lot of other options today for for doing your application deployment. So you know, Helm isn't the only way to do it. So if you want to use something else, you can definitely look online and and look at some blog posts and maybe some tutorials and actually see some of the other sort of templating tools. But uh, you know, this webinar was obviously for Helm or really the Rancher catalog specifically. Amazing, awesome, Chris. Okay, there there are there is another question. Um, this is from Leo who asks, what are the selection criteria to choose your chart repo and what do you recommend to host your own charts? Chart Museum, GitLab, something else? Yes, so I don't wanna sit and try to give an official recommendation um, for this. My sort of same default, if I'm doing development, I use the Git, GitHub or, or really any sort of Git repository to basically just add that Git repository to Rancher for me. Um, otherwise, if I'm doing tests with Helm itself, then I actually will just spin up Chart Museum because it's quite easy to interact with. Um, so it, it really depends, you know, do your research. You know, there's a reason why there's options, right? All of them have their ups and downs. So see what works for you, see, you know, and that's, that's really what I would recommend. Makes sense. Okay, cool. That's the only, that's the last question, um, and we're coming toward the end of our time anyway. So I uh, will become the presenter just to do okay. the last couple slides here. Let me know when you can see. Yeah, we should be good, Matthew. Okay, sweet. All right, so everybody, just so you know, then you see the link to, to Rancher's um, repos on Git, you can you know find Rancher, Rancher OS, um, K3S, uh, Submariner. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of open source projects here um, that you know Chris alluded to at different times. And um, you know this is a great place to, to raise your issues, um, you know read about our upcoming releases and stuff like that. Um, also, I added this um, YouTube recorded video from an online meetup that we held a few months ago that does go into you know Helm catalog, building a catalog, and it talks about and shows a demonstration of um, using the app catalog in a CI CD pipeline. Um, so some people had asked about that. You can find um, this video on YouTube and you'll get the slides after the session so you can use that that link that's in here in the slides. This is on an older version of Rancher, but hopefully, you know, the concepts and some of the demos will still be useful to you. Finally, you know, thank you everybody. Thanks for being here. Thank you for your questions. It always helps us make these training sessions better. Um, if you want to give a shout out on Twitter, you know, shout out to each other, shout out to us. It is awesome. We love to, for you to be part of the conversation. You can ask more questions um, on Twitter or on Slack as was mentioned earlier, for slack.rancher.io. Uh, and for more advanced training like these on specific topics, you can go to the Kubernetes Masterclass uh, URL. And for intro training, there were some people who were asking about just spinning up Rancher itself or Kubernetes. Uh, we do an intro training every Thursday, and you can join that at rancher.com slash training. Uh, and just to reiterate one last time, this session is recorded, so you will receive uh, the video and the slides after the training, hopefully by the end of the day or, or tomorrow morning. So look for that in your email. And that's it. All right, Chris, awesome job. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for uh, attending. All right, cool. Talk to you all later. Bye, everybody.